Yes, my name is Trish Dick. I have met, I think, most of you now. I'm the manager of Team Coaching, which lives under the umbrella of Student Services. And yes, yeah, Susan um, is also part of our research team, and uh, she's just been welcoming a granddaughter uh, into their life, another one. Uh, so she'll be on campus tomorrow. So a little bit of uh, context before we get into our findings, recommendations, and we have a game for you to play, game of teams. Any Game of Thrones uh, fans? So <clears throat> kind of building on that. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Live, exactly. That's how it feels for some of the students in teams, <laughs> living or dying. A little bit of context is our team coaching service was centralized in 2015. Prior to that, we had contractor team coaches who were in the faculty of management providing some team coaching service. I was hired as the main full-time person and joined Sarah Chettleborough, who was manager and part-time team coach at that time, and then I moved into the manager position a few years ago. Uh, and when I started, we had a variety of team coach contractors as well. So we have built out a couple more staff, and we still have contractor team coaches, just to give you a little bit of context there. In the beginning of that centralized service, we began a deeper dive into answering the question, what were the best practices uh, as team coaches to really support student teams in their learning environment? And answering that question led us to a larger question, as many questions do. <laughs> and the question that evolved was, we really wanted to understand more clearly uh, um, what was working from a Royal Roads perspective in regards to this unique proposition of team-based learning and what we could build on, what could be improved. We wanted to use research to guide our practice. Uh, and I was really grateful to have some key faculty and experts, uh, Kathleen Mannion as a faculty and Sophia Palahecki, uh, Associate Director of CTET, join us and two of our team coaches, Noreen Shaw Presser and Susan Thackeray to build out this research team. And the research also built on the work of Michael Party who through his work in the Masters of Leadership, and he's also been a team coach, associate faculty here, some of you may know him. He looked into uh, teamwork through uh, the lens of the School of Communication and Culture. And another student, Jen Stone, also another Masters of Leadership student, used her uh, research thesis on looking at online teamwork here at Royal Roads. Um, so again, we're understanding, I always forget to move my slides forward, uh, so much for animations. We wanted to further this dialogue. Um, as many of you are probably aware, and maybe some of you are not, we have a learning and teaching and research model in its 2.0 version. And that in, uh, nestled within our learning and teaching model, we have the applied and authentic, caring and community-based and transformational. And team-based learning sits under that caring and community-based pillar. Uh, Royal Roads is absolutely committed to developing the skills that the workplace demands today. Uh, working with others, working well in teams, and we are, as a university, being called to support students to enhance those competencies as part of their learning with us. Thus, we wanted to explore more deeply, starting with our own faculty and staff. So phase one was our faculty and staff, and Kathleen will talk more about that. And just briefly, because I know our time is short, uh, early in the days of team coaching centralized service, um, it became more and more clear that team coaching did not work effectively in isolation. We were not a great reactive service, though that's what we had tended to be. We were part of an integral system to support student teams in capturing their learning in a powerful transformational way. And this diagram illustrates how how we see ourselves positioned in our work as team coaches. We are only one component within a collaborative system that includes the design and assessment that comes through CTET, the program design and program leadership of program levels, and the coaching support. It's a team, all things team, working together to truly support powerful team learning. Thus, based on this lens, we embarked on our research. So Kathleen's gonna take it from here. 
Hi, everyone. It's so great that you've all come. Thank you so much. I'm just reflecting on the fact that last time I was here recording a session, I was pretending that there were people in the audience, but there actually wasn't. So it was a very awkward 25 minutes of making eye contact. Now I can make eye contact with you. Uh, okay, so uh, we're looking at the research. So, so I want to give you a little bit of a sense of the research that we, act we actually did and why we did it. So I am Kathleen Mannion. I am in the School of Humanitarian Studies, and I'm the program head for Justice Studies. And I don't know about other people and where you're situated in the university, but you've probably heard about teamwork and maybe some of the frustrations students have with teamwork. So that, for me, meant that I really needed to dig deep into what that was about, what was our value proposition as a university when we really do focus on team-based learning? It's built into the learning and teaching model prior to the learning, teaching, and research model. Um, so we wanted to base, uh, base some of our research um, loosely on the Cole model of look at what experience we have and the expertise we have, reflect and observe what we're actually doing, what we're doing well, and what we could improve on learn from that, implement some changes, and move on. So that's basically what we did with the research. So what did our, um, what did our research actually focus on? What well, we decided we wanted, like most research at the university, we wanted to focus on action-oriented uh, research. We use mixed methodology. We actually started, in terms of the methods, we started with a shift and share. So some of you may have actually um, been part of that in the early days, looking again at what we were doing well with teamwork and what were some of our frustrations. So from that, we actually launched into a workshop testing some of our ideas with BC campus across uh, across. Uh, British Columbia and a little bit further afield. Then we launched into a survey, so our quantitative um, information, we sent the survey out to all associate faculty, all staff, and all core faculty to get a sense of how is teamwork working across the university. From that, we uh, delved into some interviews, some in-depth interviews. Alongside it, we did a pretty comprehensive literature review. And then we culminated our research with an interview matrix to kind of dig down into what we were learning, find out more about what was happening. So that was the basic methodology. But the core sense here with this uh, research was to understand what was working well from our side. So we haven't yet gone to students to ask what students think, and that's important. We first wanted to know what is our model? What does that look like? What is the diversity of the model as we see it? So we had some core questions. Um, how do the uh, different programs intentionally weave team-based learning into their programs? How do instructors use team-based learning within the classroom? How instructional designers support faculty to maximize team-based learning? So also looking at how do those different aspects that Trish introduced, how do they uh, interweave together? Um, how assessments uh, or assignments are actually built with purpose, um, how team coaches, instructors, uh, program staff are actually building in team-based learning, um, and how uh, team coaches uh, and the support that they give can be ap um, optimized. So what did we find? We found lots of things, as you would imagine, but in summary, it was really exciting to see across all those different data sources, we had data saturations. We had a lot of, uh, of uh, similar responses coming forward. We had a great deal of support for team-based learning across the university, which is really good because we say we do it. Thank goodness we are actually supporting it as, a, as an institution across different departments. Um, but also uh, good alignment with the LTRM, which is fabulous really great to see that people really do buy into the learning teaching model and they actually are living it within the classrooms and across programs. Where things aren't working quite so well or could be better, there was some suggestion that we really need to ensure we have organizational commitment to team-based learning. To do the best we can, we need the institute to actually support the work that we do and some of the innovations that different uh, parts of the university are trialing.
which brings in the importance of innovation and processes to trial, because this is a learning space, you know, team-based learning. There is quite a bit of literature on team-based learning, but it's still somewhat in its infancy. In looking at what support in instructional um, uh, staff felt they needed or those um, supporting students, there was quite a bit of alignment of the information. So people were saying they wanted better assessment tools to better look at how to assess good teamwork, particularly the process. Uh, ways to handle social loafing and uh, in unequal work. So by far that was the biggest concern that people raise. I'm sure you hear it in your programs at Cross CTET within, um, within the team coaching services. Definitely social loafing and unequal work are the things that we hear again and again and again. And uh, the people that uh, were involved in the research said the same thing. They wanted help with how to actually handle that. How to manage conflict within teams. Makes sense. That's challenging. People often don't want to um, jump into dealing with that kind of conflict. And also something that was a little bit emerging, uh, emerging now, which is helpful in looking at our new mental health framework, is how to actually support our students who have complex needs. Um, key success factors. Uh, included the students themselves, as, as suggested by the participants. Uh, the students themselves were one of the key success factors. If students were committed to teamwork, they were better at it. Uh, if they showed good communication skills and solid team formations and uh, good peer-to-peer -peer support, knowledge how to work through challenges and reaching out to the instructor when they needed to, they did better. Uh, team coaches were seen as a success factor, as was the idea of bringing more upfront skills right at the, the uh, inception of courses and within uh, assignments. And with that, I'm handing it to Noreen. Thank you, Kathleen. So as Kathleen has just shared, there was uh, quite a bit of information that came forward of how do we move forward, how do we go ahead uh, with uh, some of these recommendations. One of the things that came out as a recommendation was the idea to do planning across programs. And with that in mind, we developed this game called Game of Teams. And there is a board on, the game board is on your table, so you can just flip that over and you will see your playing board and Trish is handing out the cards. So here's how the game works. First of all, um, what I would like you to do is think about designing teamwork across a program and play the game to develop the ideal roadmap for successful teamwork in this program that you're designing for. You have got some cards, and on some of those cards, there are existing ideas and elements that go into successful teamwork, and there are some blank cards. So you use either the existing cards or develop your own cards by writing uh, your idea, something that you feel might be missing from the developed cards, and then literally map that out across the road that's there. For example, these are some of the cards that we have pre-made for you. It's in your stack there, as, as I said, as well as some blank cards. So I invite you to play the game of teams, and you have 12 minutes to do so. Time is ticking. So. Right, so how was that, folks? Ah, I see thumbs in the air. Wonderful, thank you. So now, what? Uh, now that everyone has had an opportunity to play the game of teams, we can share what has been some of the top insights that have emerged from playing this game of teams. So whichever team would like to go first to share their insights, you are most welcome. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Um, so I was personally coming to this with little or no knowledge of um, teamwork at RRU. So it was a lot more complicated than I expected. Um, what we discovered was that 
um, you know, it wasn't necessarily a linear process, and we found we were um, writing the same cards multiple times so that we could um, put them throughout um, the need for multiple touch points throughout programs and courses was something we uh, discovered. Um, for example, coaching, we thought, was an example of something that um, um, really needed to happen throughout, um, as well as the self and team reflection. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was pretty much it f from us. Did you guys have anything to add? Okay. Great. Awesome. So what I what I was hearing is that the it, you found it a more of a circular process than than linear, right. and you re were repeating team coaching sessions as well as self and team reflection. Mm hmm. Nice. All right. Thank you. Great insights. So the, another group, perhaps this group, would like to share your top insights. Who wants? Sure. Oh. Take it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Awesome. One of the things we found was, as we started to sort the cards, we kept moving, we kept grabbing individual cards and saying, oh, this needs to go to the beginning. Oh, this one needs to go down to the beginning. So down at that end of the road, <laughs> at the beginning of the road, we ended up with this huge critical mass of cards because you needed that framework in order to, to inform the rest of that process. So it wasn't mm -hmm. until after we started sorting out that end, um, that we could start laying out the rest of the following the road on the, the game board. Right. So we found it's about that preparation and um, building a culture that supports that upfront work. Mm-hmm, yeah. Awesome, interesting. And what were some of the things that, that uh, emerged at the beginning of the road? Or even I see that you've, you're pre-beginning of the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're right off the edge of the, we're right off the, edge yeah. of the board. The cliff, before the cliff okay. <laughs> yeah. What was, th what was that one that we wrote, uh, that Frederick wrote? Yeah. Theory is important. For and instruction and... Course. And for students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and coordinating that between instructor and team coach. Coordination between instructor and team coach. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Indeed. And you, uh, Trish has passed around these handouts, and uh, you will receive an electronic copy of these as well. And what, are in, what we've included on, in this handout are some of our top resources as team coaches. So, for example, you talked about um, self and peer assessment. The, we work very uh, closely with ITP Metrics, our friends based at the University of Calgary, and they have an online assessment for self and peer feedback. So that's something there that uh, we're already using and included right there at your fingertips, literally. Mm -hmm. Please. Just because I know we're being recorded. Um, all these three teams, we changed the cards for this session and they were all yellow. The cards we had over here have foundation cards, we called them, that were gray and blue. Same over there. But what was so interesting, we didn't tell you that those cards were meant to be in the beginning, and all those cards were strategic, <laughs> strategically pulled into the beginning. So you've played the game how we originally thought it, just to point that out. Oh. Good work, team there. Nice. You win. Yeah. I think you did. I think you get bonus points. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So two teams have reported out. How about uh, how about you guys there? Who would like to go next? This one? Don't be shy. <laughs> oh, it's a hot commodity. <laughs> there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the mic. <laughs> I'm really not going to do justice to this here, but... Um, I think one of the things that we to carry forward from the previous group's comments uh, was that to be very intentional about what the purpose is throughout, especially as instructors, to understand what the purpose of um, each component of the team assignment is, what the underlying um, theoretical purpose is of the assignment, um, and 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 that. Um, I, I'd love for one of my colleagues to jump in here um, and add it here. Just to so the only thing I would add is uh, it's the temptation to put everything at the beginning, which is just so academic, right? <laughs> you know, uh, we just want to put everything, everybody needs to know everything before we even start. And it's a ridiculous construct, right? In a way, they need just enough, in my view, to get going. 
and then they'll come to you to find out what they need next. And I think, I think we do try to uh, preload everything to the point where it may even mask what the course was all about, right? Like, yes, the, the, the course had a, a, an aspect of teamwork in it, right? But it wasn't a team course. It wasn't a teamwork course, right? Probably had all kinds of other elements to it, right? And, you know, this, this could be the monster, if you're not careful, that buries the whole course. And so, you know, that's just a concern for me that we, that we I know this is about teams, but we get maybe a bit too carried away with trying to just preload them with all the content around team theory. So it's just a caution for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Anyone want to add at that table? Can I just ask a question? I noticed yeah. you have added a number of additional ones. Are these repeats or are they mm -hmm. new ones you want to add? One is a repeat, like the coaching. Yeah, coaching sessions is repeated because we thought it would be valuable to have them in two different places. And we had four of them, team allocation, Mm -hmm. At the beginning, uh, we already talked about the intentional design of team assignments, the problem, and the first team meeting between after the course starts, but before th teamwork theory, etc. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to, uh, you know, I think um, <laughs> I think it's important that the uh, students see that this is difficult, right? And and. Uh, so for them to have a, f a team meeting before they know everything about teams, I think is really important, right? Uh, so they feel the kind of tension of what is in front of them, right? They've been given presumably a very difficult problem and they've been told to do it together. And I think it's important that they sit around and talk about that a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Because then they see how that's gonna be difficult. We're gonna need some help here. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and I think what you just said about uh, replicating the team coaching sessions is also something that came up at this, that I overheard at this table that you also put in some extra cards around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think Shelley wants to say something. I'm just wondering about the front loading of the team stuff is mostly for the instructors. I mean, for the course yeah. design, so you know what you're doing yeah. and so that you have the theory. I wouldn't do this for the students. I would have them experience and the t regular sort of iterative things with team coaches coming in, but I was thinking more for the instructors. Mm -hmm. We had it down with the instructors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. All right, yeah, nice, great, thank you. So that leaves uh, your team there to share your top insights. <laughs> no one is making eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so not, because I totally hacked the whole thing. So I'm going to start with a comment that I, I came late, as people probably noticed. So, oh, stop. It's really terrible when your boss is always needling you about something that's really actually quite true about yourself. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to just observe that these comments, and maybe you said this already, so I'm sorry if you did, but are contextualized, right? So what you do it through across a program. So this morning, Sophia was talking about the program mapping tool and Kathleen's been deeply involved in that. And the ways in which we insert team experiences across a program differ. So this exercise is quite, in, quite isolated. Um, I think that everything can make sense depending on the context. So I'll give an example. I, um, I uh, teach a course in, uh, in the School of Education and Technology and uh, the Mahil program, and it's a course on uh, new models for institutional viability is what it's called. That's not so important. What's important is, a couple of years ago, I was at a session where George Valetzianos was giving a thing on hacking your course, like how students can hack a course. So I changed the team assignment in this course uh, last year, and this is the second iteration of it, where the team assignment, actually the students as a team have to, they are, they are constructed as a team, so they are put in a team, but then they have to come up with the assignment, so what the problem is that they are going to solve, so as a collective of, of students, 
from their experiences, what is a core issue that they want to explore that's related to the course. It's a live case, in a sense, that they create. And then the actual assignment output, like what they produce, is also up to them. It could be a paper, a presentation, and whatever it is, it's up to them. And I'm raising that because that's possible to do in this program, because this course is like course six. But it's not something you would do in course one. And so the things I think you're raising are <clears throat> very early on, and depending on undergraduate as opposed to perhaps graduate students who might have more work experience, there might be different ways in which we frame this. And so it's easy for me to say, and it's you know, kind of easy in a way. You think it'd be easier, but it actually isn't. It's harder to mark those assignments mm -hmm. and harder to get the students to get sometimes what the learning outcome is, your intention is. So you do have to do a bit of more work on this. But it just, just I wanted to make that observation because actually we just played with these cards and moved them around. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we did, I guess, team, I would say, uh, it, uh, correct me, chime in here, this is part of our team contract, is that you can intervene, <laughs> um, is that we have a pile of cards in a couple of cases. But they weren't, as you've noted, sequential, that even in the experience, that this, all this stuff that, what did we call it? The dump. The dump. The dump is actually just a whole bunch of stuff that's mixed up together. And then overarching all of this is instructor training, as thinking about assessment of learning, and then, and then in the actual experience, the team coaching experience itself. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Well covered. Yeah. Well, we had the planning and design phase as well. Um, we had the planning and design phase at the beginning, um, which involved like program learning outcomes, course learning outcomes, and the courses itself. And then we had a doing, like an overarching doing. Um, segment to it as well, which is like the cohort agreement, team formation, roles and responsibilities, and team agreement, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice, awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the game of teams, and you're all winners. <laughs> <laughs> because you've all shared some really fantastic insights uh, that we've all benefited from. Thank you very much for that. So I'm going to hand over to Sophia now, who's going to share with you um, the recommendations. Okay, so before I share the recommendations, I just want to reiterate um, how important it was for this to be a collaborative effort. So for example, bringing together CTET and the work that we do and how we support instructors and how we work with programs um, at the early stages when they are articulating um, program learning outcomes and the courses and how those pieces are gonna be interconnected. And then tying that in with the work that the team coaches are doing in supporting students when they enter that experience, as well as looping back to the programs um, and having uh, Kathleen's input on this. So this was a fantastic collaboration. So first of all, I just wanna say thank you to my colleagues for this. So the recommendations that we've noted, um, there are four bullets, but I feel like they are still very much interconnected because here we can see continue to design and deliver team-based learning as per the learning teaching research model. So we need to have conversations about uh, where team-based learning is emerging, where does it make sense, where does it maybe not make sense, um, how we can integrate it in a purposeful, intentional way across the program. And the new program mapping application allows us to capture, it's not the full story, I'll start with that. Uh, it doesn't tell us the full story, but it gives us um, a big picture view into what that experience looks like, and then we can take it from there in terms of providing the details and specifics on how we need to improve, what instructors need, how we can support, et cetera. So this piece um, is very important. So we're gonna continue our collaboration with uh, the team coaching as well as with the programs to, to work on this. So we've got the bullet, communicate services and resources available. So one of the things that emerged in the research was sometimes folks didn't necessarily know every time um, because team coaches aren't um, embedded necessarily everywhere, right? So uh, how can we communicate the services and resources that are available? How many of you know that there's a Teams work site that has resources available? 
Oh, see, we're improving already. So communicating that out, ensuring that the resources that we have are relevant to the emergent needs of the community, um, and also allowing spaces for innovation, right? So those pieces are important. We've got faculty training um, as well as the instructional designers. So, you know, I sit with my instructional design team and we have conversations and because of this work, with this collaborative work, we've actually put it um, at the forefront of the initiatives that we have for this year and uh, for last year and this year. So we are being more intentional, for example, with the conversations that we have with faculty when we're working with them on design and development of their courses. Ken, sitting right here, um, is one of those people. David is also another one that's sitting at the table with faculty, having conversations about, you know, what are you doing here with teams? Does this make sense? How can you support? How is it scaffolded? All of those great questions that we need to have. And the final one is ensuring students are equipped for effective teamwork. Um, and this spans beyond the scope of Royal Roads because one of the first things that we reference in our final report, and hopefully you all have a chance to read it, it's like 35 pages long. <laughs> Higher? <laughs> one of the first things we reference in, in that is the fact that employers need folks who can work in teams. So we need to help students not only be successful in their experiences here at Royal Roads as team players, um, but also when they take that out into their community, when they take that out into the workplace, et cetera. Okay. So future exploration. So I'm just gonna ask permission, because Steve's here. <laughs> do we have permission to do more of this? So, um, <laughs> the first thing is, we noted that we didn't have all of the voices included in this first round of research, and so we would like to expand the voices um, and continue this. So, looking at including current students, alumni, and other relevant partners in the institution in this research, um, and then continue exploring the emergent themes that, that we um, uncovered as part of this process. Social loafing, free riding, how do we address this? How do we provide supports for students, prepare them, help them understand what this is? Um, conflict on teams, that's like a no-brainer. Um, also, we're looking at transfer of team competencies in the workplace, something that I noted. Um, earlier, exploration of barriers, what are the things that are getting in the way? Um, and then finally, uh, team assessment. I'm gonna say practices, it says processes. I'm gonna say practices. Um, so team assessment practices. One of the things that we do with the program mapping currently is, to give you an example, we capture seven reports currently um, in the program mapping process. And anybody wanna guess how many of those reports are team related? Seven, how many are team related? Just give me a number. Two? Two? Any other numbers? Three. Going, going, going. Three. So three of the seven reports that we currently capture are all focused on team-based learning. So the first one is, what kinds of assessments are they using? Because we kind of had our eye on, are they asking students, are instructors asking students to write an essay that could be authored by one individual? So that's one thing. The second one is looking at whether they're assessing for both process as well as deliverable. So is there any self and peer assessment involved or is it just at the end of the day the students are being assessed on whatever it is that they produce? And then the third uh, one is looking at the percentage weighting of the team assignments across the program. So you would be able to see when you pull up the program map where they're assessing teams, what the assessment weighting is across the program. You can identify gaps, you can identify where you're too heavy, you can identify where you're not doing enough, et cetera, with these maps. We're hoping to expand that. Um, again, continuing the collaboration with team, student team performance as well as programs. That's me, I think. Well, you know, no good workshop uh, 
would be a good workshop unless we um, have an action step for you to commit to prior to leaving. Uh, we'd like to invite you to do something with these findings and your time here. And we're passing out cards. And we'd like you to think about for a moment, what's one thing uh, you can do differently or introduce to support team-based learning in your current world? So what's one thing, and that would be that for you to write down on a card, take it with you, to think about and commit to, what's one thing you can introduce or do differently based on team-based learning? So we're gonna give you one minute, this is good, uh, good liberating structure practice, one minute in silence to write down, what's an action step? And I invite you to take a card, share your learning or insights with a coworker and inspire them to do the same. All right? Have someone hold you accountable for your action step. And the very last thing is, what's one thing that you'd like to know more about regarding teamwork? We have a um, uh, flip chart paper there. You can put it on a post-it note and put it on that flip chart paper to leave us with some thinking as we enter into different uh, um, the next phase of research. What's one thing you'd like to know more about regarding team-based learning? And well, just as we bring this to a close, I wanna thank you so much, all of you for coming. Those of you who will end up watching this video to our amazing research team. We really look forward to the next phase. Uh, and one bit of a commercial really is, uh, I, I went to this team-based learning methodology course at Vancouver Island University and that TBL methodology based from, on Michelson and Sweet addresses many of these pain points of teamwork. And I know we keep promoting it uh, and there's not always funding, but it's a fantastic structure of face-to-face -face for sure and they're doing it online. I know John's incorporated in, into his classes uh, up in Terrace, BC. So just as a commercial, if you hear about team-based learning, you have some space or capacity for yourself as an associate faculty or faculty, uh, that, that might be an interesting workshop to explore of how to really integrate your classroom from a team-based learning. Thank you again. Thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon and uh, great work, everybody.